What's up everybody D-Man back welcome to a brand new video and today we're going to be doing another Godzilla minus one discussion video. This one's going to be sort of like a trailer breakdown where we're going to be taking elements from all three Godzilla minus one teasers that being the original teaser trailer that 30 second promo leading up to the new trailer and then the newest Godzilla minus one trailer and we're going to be weaving together a web of mystery trying to uncover if Godzilla will be active during World War II in Godzilla minus Minus one, or just what's going on with Godzilla versus the Navy. Consider this a mini little trailer breakdown to hold you over until the massive trailer breakdown I'm working on drops. Just to begin here, Godzilla being active in World War II, that would be a first for the Godzilla franchise. In all the Godzilla movies up to this point, including in the MonsterVerse when Godzilla's a natural occurring being who has existed for thousands and thousands of years, Godzilla has never once been active during World War II. In fact, in the MonsterVerse canon, he does not wake up until the Hiroshima bomb when the war is ending. But this Godzilla movie seems to be a little different. This Godzilla movie seems to be one where Godzilla may very well be alive and active during the war. Whether or not he looks like the Godzilla we know, or if he looks a little more godzilla sore ish that's to be determined. I would say that the godzilla sore being active during World War II doesn't really count because dude wasn't Godzilla yet. But I think in this case, we're still talking about a giant monster Godzilla, just maybe not looking as severe as he does through the rest of the trailer. Either way, this Godzilla, who will be rejuvenated to his status as a walking nuclear bomb and a symbol for nuclear annihilation, this Godzilla is actually the first Godzilla who is tied to his nuclear allegories, who is created by an atomic bomb rather than a hydrogen bomb. Unlike in the original 1954 Godzilla film, there's no way to pretend that anyone else other than America was the cause of this. In the 54 Godzilla film, it stated that hydrogen bomb testing in the Pacific is what awoke Godzilla. Well, at the time, historically, America had been the only country to detonate a hydrogen bomb in the Pacific, but fingers never pointed at America. This movie, it's even harder to claim that anybody else was responsible for Godzilla other than the United States, considering they were the only ones who had unlocked the power of the atom. Getting into the trailer, we're going to try and weave together a web of what the story of this film is using only the military context we have. This is going to be part of a larger three-point discussion we're going to be having on the channel over the next few days, or weeks, depending on how long it takes, discussing if Godzilla will be active during World War II, how the United States would respond following the war with Godzilla appearing in Japan, and then finally, if the United States would or will respond with an atomic bomb to try and stop Godzilla in Godzilla Minus One. That's all going to be touched on in this video, but there will be separate segments that come out later that will touch on those things more specifically. Going through the trailer here, we start out with our character Akitsu reacting to the horrors as we're told everyone's dead. I think he might be the only Japanese survivor from World War II who made it out of the war having witnessed Godzilla in action. The lighting on his face in this shot of the trailer suggests he's watching a nearby fire and I think he could be watching his crew get killed at sea. This also appears to be a nighttime shot and seems to be on land and Akitsu isn't too wet other than sweat and tears so I think for some reason he got washed ashore safely and is now watching the remainder of his men burn at sea. Now I could be wildly off base. This scene might not even take place during the war. He might not even be a soldier. This scene could happen towards the end of the movie when Godzilla is doing a big destruction but something about this strikes me very strongly as giving World War II vibes and I think he is witnessing his men die. Continuing on with the trailer we see a man who appears to be wearing an Imperial Japanese Navy flight suit. This looks to be our main character Shikimishi during the war, who seems to have survived an attack that left all of the rest of his crew dead. Maybe he survived a covered up Godzilla attack. Maybe he didn't see Godzilla directly. The wreckage around him implies that this may have been some sort of disaster at sea, where the ocean washed parts of the ship ashore and also these bodies came ashore. He seems to have laid them out and is looking down on them. This shot seems to indicate to me that there are some scenes set during the war, and this checks out given that the initial timeline this movie is supposed to be set between is during 1945 to 1947, meaning probably we are going to see some sequences at the start of the movie set during World War II. Now we see Sumiko Ota yelling at Shikimishi in a destroyed town. I think this is freshly post-war based on his uniform here. I think this is immediately following that last shot we discussed. I think he's put himself back together and returned home. 
home. She shoves him and calls him a disgrace. And I think they're either siblings or she is the sister or sibling of someone who died in that lineup we saw in that last shot. He might be being called a disgrace here because he was the only one to survive out of his men. Maybe she blames him. He may have also abandoned the war after whatever it was happened to him. This bombed out town is probably the result of the United States. That'd be my guess. And it's entirely possible that they're siblings and that their parents died in this bombed out town and that maybe they're at odds as a result of it. Maybe she blames him for not defending them better. Getting into the actual historical context here, where was Japan following the war in 1947? If this film is set in February of 1947, which we have strong reason to believe it will be, the Japanese Coast Guard has yet to be established and all the main warships and weapons of the former army and navy have been confiscated by the United States or completely disposed of. This is the point in modern history where Japan's military power is at its absolute weakest. Also, the Nagato, which is rumored to appear in this film, would have been sunken by this point as it was sunk in the bikini tests by now. Japanese Twitter user Akiko Hirose speculates that the United States would be reluctant to provide Iowa-class weapons or rearmament to support Japan at this time. Now that will be the discussion of the next video, if the United States would even bother defending Japan from Godzilla in the first place. But for now, I figured I'd mention that from the Japanese perspective. The Japanese Coast Guard wouldn't have been established again, as it wouldn't be established until 1948. Even then, the Japanese Self-Defense Force would not be established until 1945, so the Coast Guard would still have no way to defend themselves against Godzilla. If you're wondering about the Nagato, its final blow was delivered on July 25th, 1946 during the Baker nuclear test. It's possible that this film recontextualizes the Baker nuclear test into a Godzilla attack as we see an enormous explosion at sea in the newest trailer. This shot right here of this desolate landscape I think is our transition out of the war. I think this is post-war aftermath. The crater in the center seems to be the result of a nuclear blast, but the landscape could suggest something else. Likely contenders for where this location are is Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and Okinawa. Personally, I don't think it's Hiroshima. This landscape does not resemble it at all. We would see iconic landmarks if it was. While it does resemble the aftermath of Nagasaki a little more, it still doesn't seem like a great match to me. I think Okinawa seems very likely based on actual historical photos of this battleground, but I'm not entirely convinced. Either way, whatever this is, whatever caused this damage, the damage suggests an enormous explosion has gone off. It's possible that wherever this was, whatever went off, Godzilla was hibernating beneath the earth during it and was awakened during the war. I think this was his resting place and this is where he was revived from. It's possible that the shot of Godzilla roaring when he's all charred and burnt up to a crisp happens right here as he rises from the ground in 1964 style, just having been hit with an atomic bomb or some sort of other large conventional weapon. There are hints in the teaser that we got that suggest this scene could be set near Iwo Jima. Some Japanese viewers speculate that Iwo Jima is where Godzilla was resting during the war, and while I personally don't think this is the case, I think that this could be the setting of the fictional battleground of Odo Island. This is in the Ogasawara region where Godzilla has previously been awakened from in the 1954 film, and it's entirely possible that this was his resting place in this continuity as well. Speaking of that little teaser we got, there were some audio hints in that teaser that the United States will have a large presence in this film. An English voice seems to report that the U.S. fleet has been destroyed. The USS Newcastle was attacked in the sea. For those wondering, the USS Newcastle is a real ship. The USS Newcastle Victory was a Boulder Victory class cargo ship that the United States Navy acquired during World War II. She transported weapons and ammunition during the war. An English voice ends the teaser sounding intense, scared, and natural like a real native English speaker, saying that they have made contact. Godzilla is here. Making me think that there could be an English cast or an English voice cast for this film. Again, that's important because if Godzilla is present during World War II, well, he's going to be attacking people on all sides of the equation, not just the Japanese, as the United States had a massive military and Navy presence in the South Pacific. Continuing with that, I think if this is set post-war, the United States could still be a likely contender for where Godzilla is attacking because historically they were still occupying that part of the world, occupying Japan during the post-war era. Here's that photo of the smoking ship from the teaser, and D-9060D may have identified this as the USS Columbia CL-56, a Cleveland-class light cruiser that saw active combat during World War II. She was decommissioned a year after the war, but maybe in this continuity she never got decommissioned. She got attacked by Godzilla. We see some sort of tracking signal showing the speed of an object as it traces through a void, seemingly closing in on the center of its target. Then it's overlaid with this damage report on a submarine, and this could very well be Godzilla closing in from ranges of 32 knots to 40 knots as he arcs in a circular motion around his target. The submarine analysis here is actually the damage report from the real-life Tang SS-306, a Balo-class submarine used in World War II. Officially, she was sunken by her own torpedo off China in the Taiwan Strait on October 25, 1945 during combat. It's entirely possible that this film recontextualizes this 
wartime incident as having it be a hidden Godzilla attack. They maybe came up with the submarine story as a way to cover Godzilla up. It could be building this alternate narrative of history where Godzilla was alive and involved in the Pacific War, and the circular arc Godzilla seems to take in the last shot closing in on his target may reflect the real-life incident where the torpedo arced in a circular motion and hit its own submarine. A quick flash here shows a gauge. This is a Geiger counter spiking. A normal Geiger counter should read anywhere from 5 to 60. This one's spiking to what looks to be 300, which is the same exposure that residents of Chernobyl suffered. This is accompanied by sounds of a Geiger counter ticking, just indicating that radiation will be a large presence in this movie, again building the United States' presence during this film, which again adds to the idea that the U.S. is involved, making me think that this is still during the war. Obviously, the United States unleashed their nuclear power at the very end of the war, so that is pretty significant. A quick flash shows a boat sinking offshore of an island, with later overlays revealing that this may be a ship marked dead in the water. I'm not entirely sure. This seems to be in the Casa Areto region. It could be that Godzilla was awakened, much like in Shin Godzilla, by the United States, and much like in Shin Godzilla, the United States is trying to cover it up. This paper trail of documents we see in this teaser could all be faked documents trying to hide Godzilla's actions during the war. A few more flashes reveal damaged ships and eventually what seems to be a sinking submarine, maybe even the tang itself, which stuck out of the water in real life while sinking. And then we land on a map of the Ogasawara Island region, where we first see a ship marked dead in the water, we'll get back to that later, and we see something moving with an impact zone around it. The two seem to intersect, and I truly think that this is Godzilla swimming around the ocean himself. Later in the teaser, we see multiple sunken ships, and the area of interest seems to be moving. We then see a mysterious island, first noticed by SWFate555 on Twitter. They mark the Bayonese rocks, which are real, as islands, when they should not be considered that. The Bayonese rocks are a reef off the Izu Islands that belong to Tokyo, and it's entirely possible that in this film, this is around the location where Odo Island is. Again, from what I've seen on Japanese Godzilla Twitter, it could be the Godzilla was awakened near Iwo Jima during the war, and the United States has been trying to track and study him as a result of this, causing all the ships to be sunken and destroyed, although this explanation doesn't entirely explain the sinking of the submarine, which did not happen in that region. It's also possible that Godzilla has been driven from the Marshall region towards this area after the nuclear tests conducted in 1946, but again, I'm thinking that Godzilla was active during the war already. A course projection shows the path of sunken ships east of the Ogasawara Islands, trekking northward until it reaches the Kanto region of Japan. This checks out considering that's where the film was set, that's where it was filmed, and also that's where Godzilla's big attack sequence happens, which we will talk about later. This also reveals that Godzilla's course pivoted directly towards the mainland as he outran the United States ships closing in on him. And then that little teaser ended with this document written to the Prime Minister. This fictionalized letter was addressed by the real-life General Douglas MacArthur, who was in charge of the occupation of Japan and the rehabilitation of the country post-war. It states, Our intelligence agency coordinating with allied naval forces has confirmed the presence of a massive aquatic organism headed at high speeds towards the Japanese archipelago from the south. I think this is incredibly important that the United States tried to warn the Japanese about Godzilla on the 10th of February 1947. I think this is before Godzilla makes landfall. That will come into play later. Next we get into the really really tricky web of Godzilla versus the Navy. It's a tricky web to unweave because all of the Navy sequences we see in the Godzilla Minus One trailer do not fit the narrative that we have been discussing up to this point. Is Godzilla attacking during World War II in this trailer? I'm not sure. If so, he was not awakened by an atomic bomb. Unless he was awakened by Trinity, of course, but I don't think that's the case. The teaser with multiple military documents seems to suggest that Godzilla has been on a rampage since during the war, considering the attack of that submarine happened during the war, not after it, but it seems that his attack continued as he continues to attack U.S. naval ships after World War II. Meanwhile, the full teaser shows Godzilla having conflict with the Navy. A lot of people have misidentified these as U.S. Navy ships based on this teaser, but they're not. They are Japanese naval ships. Things get tricky here when you remember that the Japanese have been stripped of their Navy post-war. So how could it be that there are men in uniforms here? How could it be that Godzilla is attacking them in the first place? Unless these shots are set during the war. But I don't think they are. A major thing that throws most, if not all of them off, is that the Japanese ships we see here seem to have been stripped of their barrels and look to be weaponless, which only happened after the war. This indicates that at some point during the events of the film, or maybe just before it, the United States may very well have supplied Japan with what was left of her naval forces after having multiple encounters with Godzilla themselves in the Pacific. Maybe this is a way of the United States trying to help Japan defend herself, or maybe this is their way of pulling out with the war on Godzilla, claiming that their job has been done now. It's in Japan's hands. Japan has her ships back. She should defend herself. So I'm going to break down these shots in the trailer to try and figure out what exactly is going on here. We see Godzilla under the naval ship here. Many people have tried to identify what the ship is. This is an Imperial Japanese Navy ship. This scene could be set during the war, but if you look, the gun barrels have been removed, indicating that this is a post-war investigation into what is happening at sea, and these could be the resources America has 
left for Japan. 6243 Akira seems to believe that this is the Agano class light cruiser Sakawa. This is due to the modified watchtower. However, it seems more likely that it's been identified as a Type C escort ship. In the trailer, we see someone point to a map of Japan. This is probably pointing to where Godzilla is headed, a location he is going to attack, which he eventually does. Could be that he's already attacked there, I'm not sure. And then we match cut to a shot of Godzilla's hand bursting out of the sea to grab another naval ship. This ship seems to proudly sport the Japanese flags, although they aren't the Imperial flag, they are the standard Japanese flag. Again, just another indication that this takes place post-war. Then a very Godzilla versus Kong-esque shot, Godzilla erupts his atomic breath from under the ocean to explode this naval ship. This appears to be a mini nuclear explosion. Again, that detail will come in handy when we discuss the nuclear bomb potentially going off in this movie. This mini nuclear explosion seems to erupt with a beam of light shooting upward in that good old Godzilla atomic breath greatness, but the ship here is very interesting. It's either a very long ship that has yet to be identified, or this is the two ships lined up to each other from at the end of the trailer that we will discuss later. If that's the case, which I don't really think it is, this will be the death scene of both Noda and Akitsu as they were on those ships. A small Japanese ship comes to investigate a larger ship. This is the larger ship that I think is marked dead in the waters, and this is what leads to, I think, the sinking of that smaller ship off the island that we discussed earlier. Due to the fact that this ship isn't sinking terribly fast, it seems that this is pretty close to the shore. It may even be beached near Odo Island or some other island. This appears to be the Liberty class freighter, identified by Sir Booms a lot, Y Wing, on Reddit. This makes this the only American ship seen in the trailer and ties it directly back into that teaser we've been discussing. This is being investigated by smaller ships from earlier and is probably what's going to lead to both ships being destroyed. Then we see a man here standing on what seems to be a Skoten class mine layer, and he's questioning why he's been drawn out to a certain place at sea. I believe that either the United States or Japan is having him investigate the sinking of this US ship, and in turn they wind up investigating Godzilla themselves. If these shots are set during the war, maybe they're just soldiers responding to an SOS and Godzilla winds up attacking them themselves. I think he could be a soldier based on the uniform he appears to be wearing, but if that's the case, I don't know why he's wearing this kind of flashy jacket over it. The ship we see here is the same one investigating that destroyed floating ship in the previous shot. This makes me think that this is actually long after the war, and now the Japanese are having to pick up the investigation where the United States left off. We see some sort of Imperial Japanese Navy ship come crashing into the dock here. You can identify it by its red underbelly. This could be the Japanese mine layer Wakataka, identified by Cringebaby2 on Reddit. We then see who I think is Shikishima laying on the ground while the audio states that monster will never forgive us. I think this is Shikishima based on his jacket, but the lack of head bandage makes me think that this happens earlier in the film before the big Kanto attack sequence. Maybe this is said during the war when he was taken potentially as a POW. Maybe this is right before all of those bodies wind up washing ashore on the beach. Maybe this is the incident that caused that in the first place. Or maybe he's just survived getting a boat thrown at his head by Godzilla. I'm not really sure. We then see Godzilla make landfall on the dock with the remains of the ship he's launched ashore right next to it. This is probably right after he heads for Tokyo for the very first time. And I think it's incredibly important that we see an Imperial Japanese Navy ship by his side when he's coming on shore here because I think this leads directly into the attack of the Ginza War, which means that the Japanese will have naval ships in this movie after the war. I think that's a big detail. A couple other details here that I forgot to mention in the original recording just because there's so much to cover here. That scientific summit we see held to review the microfilm footage, I believe that's where we're actually going to get into a lot of the stuff we saw in that teaser, the snippets of the sinking ships and those maps and whatnot. That all takes place after the war for sure because that states clearly on a whiteboard giant creature damage situation and it also mentions the destruction in Ginza so I believe that this is set directly after the aftermath of the Godzilla attack in Ginza Tokyo. I think this is them reviewing all of that so I do think the Japanese have been warned by this point. I don't think this is them learning of Godzilla they already know about him and they're just assessing the situation. Also that shot at the end of the teaser with those two ships sailing towards each other and the man screaming I don't think that's connected to any of this stuff. The lighting is very different than the previous shots. It's a lot stormier than a lot of the other stuff we see. The sea color looks different. These do appear to be Japanese destroyers heading right towards each other. I'll get into what types of ships they could be in different videos, but I don't think this is going to be any pre-war stuff. I think this is all post-war. I think it actually comes towards the end of the movie considering we see both Akitsu and Noda there, and I don't think either of those two characters are going to be on a ship earlier in the film. Specifically, Noda I don't think is going to be on a ship earlier in the film, so I think that this does come towards the end of the movie. Did any of this discussion help to build any threads here? What's my conclusion? <laughs> Cut that part. <laughs> in summary here, this is a really complicated mess we're dealing with. We're dealing with a lot of different conflicting details here. We've got details of Godzilla sinking submarines during the war. We've also got details of Godzilla tracking his way northward towards the Kanto region of Japan post-war.
war. We've got Godzilla attacking naval ships, but they're not the naval ships we were seeing in that teaser. Instead, they're the naval ships of Japan, but they're stripped of their weapons, so it's probably post-war, but the Japanese have them, which they shouldn't. So it gets really tricky. Now, it is important to note that some of these Japanese Navy ships did remain in the Japanese possession. They were just stripped of their weapons post-war, which could be why the Japanese are using them, but not all of them. So that's where things get a little strange. Going back to the discussion I was having towards the beginning, I believe this movie will have a large English voice cast. I think the American military will be a presence in this movie that's kind of a faceless entity. I think that we'll see their ships and we'll see their maybe tanks and we'll see their planes, but I don't really think we'll see the United States themselves. I do think Godzilla will be awakened during World War II towards the very end of the war, maybe even by Trinity itself. And I think he'll go on a rampage himself, destroying ships in the South Pacific and eventually being hit by a nuclear bomb. I think that nuclear bomb will irradiate him and transform him into the Godzilla we all know and love. I think that is the sin that Godzilla will never forgive humanity for. But it gets really tricky when you've got a Godzilla who looks like like Godzilla swimming around the ocean attacking Japanese naval ships. I don't know what the timeline of those are, but I think it all starts towards the beginning of the film as Godzilla goes from attacking during the war to after the war and becomes this mess that the United States just can't explain or cover up anymore. I mean, their cover is gone. The war ended. How are they going to explain the fact that Godzilla is still sinking ships? Nuclear tests in the Pacific, perhaps? But what happens when he comes on land? Do they just pass the buck to Japan and say, hey, use what's left of your navy to try and defend yourself? Or do they step in and try and defend Japan themselves? I guess that'll be the topic for the next video. What do you think, guys? How are you feeling about the Godzilla minus one timeline? Are you thinking I'm kind of on the right path here, or do you think Godzilla will be awakened post war. A lot of people believe that Godzilla will be awakened by the Baker Pacific test that happened in 1946. I don't entirely know because it seems like some of these ships sinking that we've been teased happened during the war. I think that completely altered the course of the timeline for Godzilla minus one. So let me know what you're thinking down below. What are your thoughts? Will we see Godzilla active during the war? I think that's a wonderful idea that I would love to see explored on film. I think it's such a cool idea to have Godzilla going around during a war as this neutral force who's kind of just picking fights with everybody who gets in his way. This is another reason why I didn't love the Godzilla sword, because he kind of just attacked Americans and it was kind of boring. It would have been more interesting if Godzilla was this complete wild card that you just couldn't predict what he was going to do. And that's what I think this movie is delivering on. A complete wild card swimming around the Pacific who is doing unthinkable things to everybody he comes in contact with, leaving a trail of destruction and misery behind him and creating this wide web of confusion. I think it could be pretty cool. <laughs> But let me know what you guys think down below. I'm going to leave it here for this one, guys. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. If you want to support the Patreon, you can use the link in the description below where you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community, and more. All right, that's it for this one, guys. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get the full breakdown out. Thank you for sticking with me here. That full breakdown is just enormous, so it's going to take a bit to get through. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, that's where we'll officially end it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man, out.